Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. We begin with a view that should be familiar to you by now. Uh, it is the Orion carrier plane with a payload on its back, but it's a very different payload. We are trying to supply our Mars ship with a whole lot of hydrogen, and it's probably got to take two trips, but I just don't know what kind of load we can expect the Orion carrier plane to hoist up with a liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen stage here with these SE2040V engines. These are the basically scaled up RL10s if you'd like to think about it with really huge nozzles. And yeah, we have to see exactly how much hydrogen we can deliver each time, more or less. So I have a test payload. We've got sort of a, I don't know, orange tank sort of feel to it, I guess we were going for. And I decided to go with balloon tanks because they'll be the most efficient as far as dry mass. Not that they're great still, mind you. With hydrogen in, uh, the balloon tanks still weigh like more than 20% of the wet mass. So yeah, I mean, it's still tough. It's still tough. But yeah, we are using these balloon steel aluminum tanks. I guess steel L is aluminum. And we are doing that for this stage as well and seeing how it goes and the, payload, the dry mass fraction is a little bit better down here with the oxygen and hydrogen. And we've got some MLI layers but no radiators. We also have a certain amount of MH and NTO for our RCS and I'm not entirely sure whether that's enough or too much either. So yep, it's a matter of optimizing this. As you can see, it's not like it's giving me good delta V readings at all and that's because right now the Orion carrier plane is the root part. Uh, for control purposes, we'll have to switch uh, vessels mid-flight. Somebody had asked in the comments how to do that. It's the square brackets, and that's how you change vessels. So, yeah, we will have to switch, and that's why it's not giving us the information. The payload is not 124 tons, it's more than that. So, well, let's try it out. The issue is, of course, that this has to get to the high orbit that our mission is currently in. It is uh, not that one, this one. It is in this elongated orbit. We're pretty close to the right relative inclination. Actually, we're probably a little bit past because we have to do the whole uh, Boca Chica to Cape Canaveral thing. Uh, in other words, go to 75 degrees. But yeah, I think we can launch right now immediately. SAS on, throttle is up, and ignition. And launch. So ignition of nine Rex engines. So obviously I shaped the tanks. These are all procedural tanks so that they fit the same mount that the Star Stage 2 uses. And if we get good numbers on this, if I can optimize it right and get a good sense of how to make it, then I'll just create a blender version probably. Maybe we'll call it Star Stage 3, who knows though the star stages were meant specifically to fit inside Starship. Uh, th this would fit inside Starship, but I don't know if it fit inside Starship with a lot of room for payload. Okay, lower engines off and rolling. Now if I can get things to work safely in 1.12, I'll gladly move this save over and we could do all this in 1.12, but that's certainly no guarantee. We, I still have to check out the light support because I am still using tag light support. Of course, we'll have to keep that consistent now that I remove Kerbalism. And we have to see that everything plays well with that. And EVA is our whole other issue because the whole EVA system in 1.12 is different, right? They've got their inventories and everything. I would like to use that system, but um, we have to check that everything works out. But yeah, there's hope that I will move this into 1.12, but everything needs to be checked out including the Orion carrier plane actually working which it currently doesn't okay well that's close enough separation and switching over and ignition and ignition if this delta v reading is right we are nowhere near being able to get over there i think we're carrying way too much mh and nto we could deliver some, that was one of the plans, but I think maybe we're over mass on that. 
We didn't seem to have any problems getting to 4,000 meters per second with the Ryan carrier plane, so we could probably make this heavier as well, add some more fuel to this stage. I think we need about 1,000 meters per second more. And we haven't even fixed the relative inclination, though. With these high orbits, a lot can be done with that. Okay, alright, alright, well, uh, not a workable orbit, but we are going to revert and fix. I'll try rerouting and seeing if we can get a good delta V reading. Um, it's a little bit dodgy, but see, uh, it rotates the entire platform. Uh, well, we'll see what Kerbal does with that. Now, let me take that off. And that's not a great sight either. Okay, it's actually 161 tons, so that's a lot. But how are we going to get an extra thousand out of this? Well, first let's reduce the size of the RCS. It's got the delta V. I mean, it's got the thrust weight ratio. Maybe we could just put three of the engines. But then we'd have to tilt up and everything, so... Certainly we can't get more efficient tanks, at least I don't think so. Uh, we're probably pushing it as far as payload capacity there. So, the other option is to reduce the size of these. Which means we'll be delivering less fuel. 170... I guess we can afford... It's uh, currently um, more than what the normal NTP tank that we have actually carries. If we take a look at one of those NTP tanks. Uh, 6 meter NTP tank. So one of these tanks has 258,000 liquid hydrogen uh, combined. That's 170. We've got 290 right now. So we can reduce that. Uh, note that the dry mass of this is 11.38 tons. And that was based on the NASA information on what they were planning. This is 1.8. That's 1.6, 3.4 altogether. And then let's say 2.5. So it's much lighter like this. But then again, this isn't expected to control boil off the way that other tank is, so it is a trade-off situation. Okay, now we have about what I want, maybe a little bit too much there. Go for six and a half minutes, 164 tons really pushing it for the Orion carrier plane to get to the required speed. Now I have to hope that doesn't mess up like this. <laughs> That's a whole discussion. That might actually be the right delta V reading for once. But our platform is tilted. Let's see what happens. It's literally tilted here. <laughs> it's, uh, well, okay. Oh, those launch clamps are working overtime there. Let me aim camera here and also control from here for now. Um,. So that's tilted. We'll, it'll fix itself. Okay, well, we reverted, so we should still be... Maybe we should wait the day, though. Because we were having trouble correcting the inclination otherwise. Okay, let's try it now. Throttle up, SAS on, and ignition. And launch. Well, something rocking about. But we will survive. We are past the speed of sound. Okay, and we're rolling. Uh, the shading on the procedural tank legacy textures might not be great there. But yeah, the carrier plane can definitely do this much. Okay, that's 4,000 separation. And let's see what we can do here. Okay, shut down, 243 by 215, we've still got some inclination though, 2400 like exactly, so that's not a lot of margin. Okay, let's get rid of the nose cone, I should have done that a little bit earlier, but off that goes. Now our docking port is free, and let's see if this is going to be enough to make a rendezvous. That is the question. Maybe with the RCS we have enough, but it's really tight. Basically, we're looking at 2006 there, plus 23, so 2030, plus 172, basically 2200 
and two. And then we've got the three, let's say 30, in order to match speeds. So we need 2,532, and we have 100 meters per second short of that, but the MMH and NTO might be able to provide the rest. Um, I'd rather not go through the whole thing and find out that we don't have enough, so we are going to try and launch this again and try and get an extra 200 out of this and see if that's possible. I mean, I think we can just lengthen this because we weren't using all of the capability of the of the carrier plane. And maybe a touch less of the RCS still. Okay, but this is basically an optimization episode. We're trying to squeeze everything we can out of this with the carrier plane and with the balloon tanks and all this. I don't know if we need 50 MLI layers, I thought that. We've already left off the radiators though, so that's that's already short of things. We don't have a fairing. I've done a lot of things to try and make sure everything is optimal. Okay. I've been having some glitchiness. It uh, The past few times it exploded on the launch pad. It seems completely misplaced here and got this weird residual speed. I'm gonna try and bring it back in. It seemed lower in the whole launch system than it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like this, but then it went down. I think, I think I'm gonna switch back to having the carrier plane be the root part. If it doesn't mind too much, that might be safer. There was a reason why I had it like that in the first place. Okay, it seems stable now. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. Still got enough, it looks like. All right, separation, and move over here, RCS on. Control from that little guy. And, well, let's make sure that that's all right. And, ignition. Okay, and shut down. A little bit less than I was expecting, but all right. Off goes the cap. Oh, a little bit more now, but let us try to make the rendezvous, finally. Oh, we also did a better job of lining up. So we've got 2,000 there, just 36 there, so and then 330 there. So we need less overall because our inclination was less to start off with. Anyway, let us activate our solar panels. And let's see if we can refuel that thing. We'll have to send up one more of these hydrogen refuelers and then we could probably combine the xenon gas with uh, crew transfer because xenon gas isn't quite as voluminous and heavy. I mean, I wouldn't say the hydrogen is heavy, it's just heavy with the tanks. Oh, let's boil off. We've got some, but it's not too bad, I don't think. Um, it occurs to me that I didn't put extra antennae on here. I hope the range... We've uh, we've switched from Kerbalism to the stock comms now. And I don't actually know what the range of the early controllable core is. Uh, uh, the control system seems all over the place right now. I think it'll sort itself out once we light the engines though. shut down. All right. Maybe I shouldn't be going too far on that because we do have another thing to do there. Uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. It seems... Oh, uh, we need to enable crossfeed across this otherwise the forward ones are not gonna get any. Yep, okay. Onward. Let's see about comms. Uh, I 
I think it's okay. Early controllable core is wonderful, as far as Stockcoms is concerned. Yeah, something about MechJab isn't happy about controlling this properly. Okay, well, with all the RCS touch-ups I've been doing, we've already used half of that fuel. Okay, we finally have a close approach there. 524 meters, we had to do a lot of burns with these two engines, not that one. We only have two ignitions left with this pair. And we'll need one more to slow down. Just barely enough fuel, but that's what we're looking for, basically. We want to optimize very precisely for exactly what we need. And then in the future, when the Mars missions get back and need to be refueled, they'll have to capture into basically this sort of orbit again. And he will, okay, let's not go too fast. Okay, we have docked. And now let's move the hydrogen in. Okay, so we'll need about 228,000 there and extra. Basically, we need another one of these pretty much exactly. Okay, well, it's got more delta V now. I don't know what's going on with this node, but let's make sure there's nothing else that we can do here there's a trivial amount of hydrogen and oxygen we could probably deorbit with that and i didn't think we had enough mh and nto to make a whole lot of difference either well we are just going to deorbit this and then proceed with another refueling it's probably good to see what that resupply got us now this is reading 2,400 meters per second for the exit, which is what I was expecting. I don't know why it was showing 4,000 before, but we've got 4,442 right now. And in order to capture around Mars, that takes about 2,000. So now we have enough for it to capture after we transfer over. But then we need another 2,000. I mean, really, we probably want for both things uh, 2,400 each. So let's just, for margin's sake, say 3,000 altogether in order to get back. So that's how much extra we need over what we have right now. So to get that, we would like to probably get some more in the xenon gas. Obviously, we're really low on that. And then we'll top off the other tank. But for now, we'll focus on the hydrogen. And then I'll see what to do about the xenon gas and other supplies we I mean, this delta V we have without all of the food, water, and oxygen. We have some food, water, and oxygen. We can't see the life support right now. But of course, we brought all that in into the habitat, but we still need much more than that. I don't want to do a whole lot of trips, so we're just going to dock a supply vessel to the end of this and have all the supplies in that. But that's a whole other mass that is going to reduce our delta V. So we do need to make this more robust, probably... It needs to be longer but anyway let's get what we have here filled up first okay here we go for number two throttle up SAS on and we'll aim camera there and then ignition and launch and off we go again it's still rocking though at least we don't have all sorts of wiggling like I did in 1.12 when I tested this there there was a lot of wiggling when I brought the rocket out there and shut down and let me just take a peek no that's not a whole lot that we're re reserving so it's probably it's probably about right okay back to this and ignition with this here we can still put the fairing adapter and use this same tank arrangement for other payloads. Of course, whether I want to go with balloon tanks, I mean, I guess it's no harm. It's basically acting like a centaur stage after all. It doesn't hang out that much, maybe six hours tops. So, 
yeah, I, I guess it should be legit, right? I mean, we're not having it hang out more than a day. Well, it doesn't look like we can correct our inclination any more than that, so we're a little bit worse off than last time. Okay, and shut down, 260 by 188. And we have about the same delta V that we had last time. Uh, we'll need to do a little bit more of a correction. Why is that node over there? <laughs> That's the node to go out. I don't know why it's over there particularly. That's the one for the ship. It's definitely not encountering Mars like that. Somehow that thing got moved. I have no idea how. It'll have to be replotted. But anyway, not our concern right now. Okay, so... 2,157 plus 27 there. And... Oh, great. Our maneuver has disappeared. Oops. Okay, so we have a separation of 6.7 there. Our first maneuver is 2,157, then 27, and then 100 for an inclination correction, and then 127. So, all together we have that. Now it's less than 2,400, so we'll just go with it as is. And ignition. Yeah, I have no idea why it's wiggling around so much. It can't seem to settle on the node. I'll try... ...reducing this. But it's bizarre. Okay, next node has been adjusted, and we are going for it. Ignition. Oh, we're at the wrong end, it looks like. Let's just slip on by. Okay, with the sun rising in the background, we are just sort of parallel to it right now. I guess maybe the refueler should look more like a centaur stage and less like the orange tank. That is a consideration. Maybe it ought not to be orange foamy. Okay. And I think that'll be good. We have a little bit more MHN NTO left over over there. We'll see if we can deorbit this properly. Undock. No, we still had too much liquid and hydrogen. I tried to reserve some for deorbiting, but probably did too much. Okay, so at Apoapsis we'll deorbit. So, in f full view of the Earth, retrograde. And that'll wrap it up for this video, mainly testing out this sort of idea, but perhaps the look of it might change when I make a model of it. I think that probably would be wise. But it does the job, so... As long as we've got the balloon tanks, we can at least carry one full tank of those NTP tanks worth of hydrogen up to this high orbit and do the refueling. It's a little bit tedious. Uh, maybe eventually we'll get around to uh, figuring out how to park the Mars vessels around the moon and refuel from the surface of the moon. Not that that wouldn't be tedious, mind you, but yeah, that, that could also take some time, but, but maybe... Maybe we can get a larger lander than we have right now, a hydrogen lander, to carry up more at one time. Anyway, lots of plans that we have to figure out. For now, this has been the test of this particular system. Next time we have other things to bring up. We have a matter of 46 days until the Mars window. That maneuver has to be replotted clearly because it's been wandering around all over the place. And we will see how it goes. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.